But my concern is that you may be hit with claims about acromancia that represent it as being better than the current probiotics that we have. And I just don't see the case for that. Now, again, it's not to say you couldn't trial the acromancia, but I want you to have a balanced perspective on what the research is showing. Additionally, there are ways that you can naturally increase acromancia that do not require you to take acromancia as a supplement. And this comes back to the ecosystem analogy, meaning as a general observation, things that improve host health tend to improve the richness and diversity and balance of the microbiota. So if we intervene upstream and do things that are health promoting, sleep, exercise, stress management, fermented food consumption, healthy diet regarding polyphenols, fiber, proteins, fats, then we tend to see these downstream impacts of a healthy microbiota. And we can even add to that probiotic supplementation. So let me loop in a few things here. Firstly, two studies have shown that eating a diet rich in prebiotics, so these are the things that feed bacteria, prebiotics and FODMAPs actually increase acromancia levels. So on the one hand, this is great. If you eat essentially more fruits and vegetables, then you can feed your gut bacteria and see improvements in acromancia levels. However, as we've discussed many times on the show in the past, especially if someone has gut symptoms, a diet high in fruits and vegetables, and most specifically prebiotics and FODMAPs, might flare their symptoms and be deleterious for their microbiota. And this is where a, a wonderful 2022 meta-analysis in the journal Gut from Chris Black and colleagues at the University of Leeds is, is very relevant. And to quote, the low FODMAP diet, so this, this case we're restricting things that feed bacteria, the low FODMAP diet ranked first for abdominal pain severity, abdominal bloating or distension severity, and for bowel habits. So coming back to the analogy of not wanting to micromanage the ecosystem, let's say you did a stool test. Your healthcare provider said, you're low in acromancia, eat more fruits and vegetables, and you were already eating at baseline a decent amount of fruits and vegetables, so you weren't way under the norm of the standard American diet. And you also had gas, bloating, you suspected leaky gut for whatever reason, abdominal pain, loose bowels, constipation. You then start eating more fruits, vegetables, prebiotics, and FODMAPs, and your symptoms get worse. So this would be a good example of where treating a specific lab marker can actually lead you to undertake an intervention that might be the opposite of what's helpful for you. So that point aside, there are other dietary strategies that have also been shown to improve levels of acromancia. When a low calorie diet is combined with exercise and in the appropriate context, this can be health promoting if someone needs to lose some weight. Now, if someone's underweight, that wouldn't be a good idea. Other research has shown the same for a ketogenic diet or for intermittent fasting or for the consumption of polyphenols. Now this comes from animal data, so we should be a little bit bridled, but with the consumption of cranberry extract or conquered grape, they were able to de uh, demonstrate again in animal model improvements in acromancia due to the polyphenol content. And then lastly, a 2022 randomized control trial found that a lactobacillus and bifidobacterium blend probiotic increased acromancia levels. So we have a number of strategies here that not everyone needs to do. Not everyone should be ketogenic. Not everyone should be fasting. But the point that I'm trying to make is there are multiple things that you can do to improve acromancia, some of which may make you feel good and some of which may flare you. So we want to be careful not to just blindly try to increase levels of one bacteria in the gut absent to your experience. And another way of thinking about this is Acromancia, like many bacteria in the gut, might be a proxy for host health. Meaning, we take people who don't exercise and we serially assess their microbiome over time. When they start exercising, their microbiome shifts and becomes more diverse and healthier. And they stop exercising and it becomes less diverse. We see the same thing with disruptions of sleep. So I just want to be careful to tie in that concept so that you don't treat the lab markers at the exclusion of listening to your body 
and using that biofeedback as the best way to determine what therapies work best for you. And this happens all the time where people go low carb and they don't feel well, but they keep doing it. Or people go high fiber and they don't feel well and they keep doing it because they're treating a lab value and not listening to their body.